Well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to the uh, Shender Downs Market Commentary uh, with my colleague uh, Sean McCann. Sean, welcome back. Thank you so for having me again. You. Yeah, we have a lot. We have a lot to go over. But um, capital markets uh, finished the first half of the year uh, in, in good shape, and I think that there was a lot of give and take. Some things that we've seen before, and and, and then some things that we really haven't seen. A while. And one of the things that my favorite quote on the on the baseball front was, you know, talk to me after the All Star game. When I sat down to kind of write this this article, where you saw the you know the S and P 500 powered by the magnificent seven stocks. Again, that's kind of the similarities that we saw carry over from the first quarter. You know, really really start to 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 really power markets up. And you had the S and P 500 up, you know, a little bit over four and a quarter percent. And then you have the equal weight S and P 500 index down 2.7 percent. Yep. And and I think that there are some investors out there that thought that this was somewhat of a new phenomenon. And the the quarter was very interesting. What changed in terms of broad equity markets was that the strongest asset class of the major equity asset classes was emerging markets. It returned five percent. It actually was positive. Uh, international developed negative. Small mm -hmm. caps negative. Mid caps negative. You had the S and P 500 powered by seven stocks positive, and then you had emerging markets. And it was this idea of, hey, talk to me after the all-star break, because there were certain things that would have to happen for this market to really continue to move forward. And so, yeah, and I think if you take what happened last week as an example of, of what we might see in the third quarter, maybe the second half of the year, last Thursday, we got a deflationary inflation reading, basically meaning another signal that inflation is coming down. And in reaction to that, we saw rates come down. So we saw bonds perform quite well. But then on the equity side, interestingly enough, we saw big tech, software, semis, mag seven names really sell off. I believe Tesla was down over 5%. And video was another one that was down quite, quite materially. What is different than previous years was that there are a lot more value names in here, right? Value stocks, value funds, some fixed income funds, some international stock picks. And, and the analogy that we talked about, baseball is the one American sport that is probably most aligned with capital markets and investing. Plate discipline is something that, uh, for those of us that really enjoy watching baseball, is super fun to watch, where you have a batter, works a count, and then he ends up getting the good pitch that he gets to hit. I think that's what we've really tried to do over the course of, I, you know, I would say coming out of COVID, you know, the big ramp up after the stimulus, the really good year in 2021, 2022 obviously being in down year, but there's some yep. things that we did from a diversification standpoint that helped blunt some of that volatility downward. When I think about international markets, one of the most surprising facts I like to pull out is if you actually look at the top 50 names across the whole world, over half of them are actually coming from international markets, believe it or not, even though we've got the MAG 7 back here at home. But from like a more thematic standpoint, you know what we're seeing, for example, in Europe is earnings are actually becoming a lot more resilient than what we previously expected. So we're seeing strong earnings growth on that side. Uh, in Asia, uh, we're still seeing really strong fund flows into Japan because we've talked about it a little bit uh, last quarter, two quarters ago. You know, we're seeing some reform throughout Japanese financial markets, which is increasing shareholder value there. Emerging markets like India and Korea and Taiwan are now big enough, both from you know their own country's market capitalizations of their stock markets, but also in the companies that they have. When you look at the all of the information coming in, we don't know when the interest rates cut will happen, but all signs point to the next action taken by the Fed is going to be an interest rate cut, which again benefits a lot of these other companies and not maybe less so some of these mega cap technology. You know, this year is going to be talk to me after the third quarter. So if you want to learn more about where we're seeing things going, we'd love to have that conversation. Uh, please reach out to your Schneider Downs contact and we'll make sure that it happens. Uh, from uh, you know, until then, until the, we take the third quarter, Sean. The next one. It's good to see you, bud. You too. Take care. Bye.